Hey guys, this is Catherine from Sterling Inc. In today's video, I would like to share with you guys how I use my Hobonichi planners to plan for my small businesses. But before I get started, I would like to thank my sponsor today, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. For those of you who might not have heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community offering thousands of classes on various topics ranging from creative classes such as creative writing, photography, illustration, to business classes for marketing, leadership, and management. I have been a longtime member of Skillshare and have really benefited from their classes, so I was very honored that they reached out to me for this opportunity. The class I have just started recently is Video for Instagram, Tell an Engaging Story in Less Than a Minute by Helise Narvaez. I've been trying to create more Instagram reels and showcase my products as well as behind the scenes stories of my shop. And I realized that telling stories in video format is not something that I'm very good at. So as I've learned before, when I feel stuck, it's better to consult the experts right away. Skillshare is perfect for this because I can learn new skills at the comfort of my home whenever I want to. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so that means you will not have to sit through ads. So you can actually focus on learning wherever your heart takes you. And it's only $10 a month with an annual subscription. But for the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, you will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So let's get started. So I have my two planners here. I will first flip through them really quickly just to show you um, what the pages look like after I finish planning. And then I will kind of give you a little overview for my overall structure and afterwards I will use these blank pages to sort of mock up plan with you guys um, just so that I don't have to uh, mess up my actual planner and at the same time I can just write down more specific things so you can see how my um, process works so let's get started with the actual planners um, so to give you an overview, I use my Hobonichi Weeks mainly as a pre-planner and also a project planner. So what that means is that um, sometimes I will have projects that are spanning across different months. So that's when this will come in handy because I'm not afraid to mess it up, sketch things out and just um, try things out. Whereas this planner is more for um, things that are already decided and it's more of an action plan for something that's already been planned out so that's the difference and I don't want to mess this up by tr trying to sketch things out it just becomes too chaotic so I do use this planner as like a messy planner where I just um, sketch things out ahead of time so for example right now it's May and I'm currently working on my June collection but you know as the day goes on and as I'm working on the June collection there might be ideas coming up into my head for collections in November or December. That's when I will go in here and write out the ideas in the monthly section. So that's how I use my Hobonichi Weeks. And if there are even more specific ideas, then I will go into the weekly section and fill out more information. And then at the beginning of each month, when I'm planning out things in the monthly section in my Hobonichi Cousin, I reference my Hobonichi Weeks just to make sure that I have captured all of my previous ideas or you know some ideas might not work out so then I just cross them off. This way I make sure that I don't forget things that I have, uh, I don't forget the ideas that I've had beforehand and that way I don't waste time just thinking, um, trying to come up with new ideas if that makes sense. So I'm just trying to be efficient with my time by just kind of recording every thought related to my business so that I don't have to start from scratch every month. So the reason why I like to have a separate planner for all of my sketchy ideas is because I don't, I want to keep my Hobonichi cousin relatively clean with events that are actually going to take place because that way I know everything is already planned out, thought out. I just have to execute. And that's kind of my mental state when I'm looking at my Hobonichi cousin, whereas the Hobonichi Weeks, I'm not afraid of being messy. I'm not afraid of just crossing things out, um, you know, randomly like that. So I, I'm not afraid of that. So when I'm in my Hobonichi Weeks, I feel really free. I don't have to think about what it's going to look like and all of that. And not that that's constantly in my mind, but I think it's just kind of, I can't help for my brain to think like that sometimes. So this is very freeing. Um, so that's what I use my Hobonichi Weeks for. And my Hobonichi Cousin, uh, let me just quickly show you, maybe that will be more helpful 
to explain how I use it. And if you guys have been a subscriber for a while, then you already know how I use my Hobonichi Cousin. But in the monthly section, I pre-plan out um, for the entire month. And I will just first start by kind of filling out main dates and I will just break that down into smaller tasks. And I plan week a week at a time. So I will kind of write out the big tasks on the left hand side underneath each week number. And then I'll spread out the tasks across that week, if that makes sense. And I use um, color coding system for my planners. So I use these zig dot zig clean color dot markers. So these have two tips. One side, this side is the skinny tip. And then this side is the one with the round tip so that you can kind of create little circles um, using the different colors. So that's how I color code my planner. As you guys know, I combine my personal planner and also uh, work planner. So it's very helpful to be able to see the color right away and then know exactly what it is instead of having to read through everything. Um, so that's what this normally looks like. And I put my goals here too. And I put my uh, work goals on the bottom. Um, so that's what a typical month would look like after I'm finished. I'm completely done with it. Um, and then let's go to the weeks. So the week section I just use as a place to write down my to-do list. So um, I also color code them. And when I'm planning out the weeks, I always reference the monthly. So let's go back to say April. So I will look at the main tasks here and then write them down on the left hand side. And then I start out by just filling out all of the little tasks here onto the page. And then throughout the day, I might have more little things to um, do. Some of those bigger tasks might be broken down into, some of these tasks might be broken down into even smaller tasks. So that's how I use my um, weekly pages. And my daily pages, I've been using it as a place to just write down notes. Uh, and I disregard the dates up top and I find that's the best way for me to kind of be efficient with these daily pages because sometimes it's just very annoying to kind of stick to the dates and then there there are days when I don't touch my planner at all then those dates will be empty and that kind of discourages me so what I ended up doing is I just use it as a brain dump as my notes pages and I just start from the first and just continue going um, without looking at the dates and that way you know there is a continuity I don't have to skip pages I don't have to go back and fill up blank pages when I run out of room it just makes so much more sense for me so that's how I've been using the daily pages and I do pre-decorate them this is the only place that I really decorate because I just I really like how they look and it kind of makes me want to write in these notebooks so yeah I basically just treat each month as a monthly notebook and then when it's June it doesn't matter if I didn't finish the May portion I just jump into June and that way it's also easier for me to kind of go back and look at what I was doing for each month um so yeah that's how I use the daily pages and a lot of the times I feel like I'm really having a meeting with myself on the daily pages um, you know sometimes when you're talking with someone else about a project ideas will come up whereas if you're just trying to do it yourself it it you're, you you could get a little bit stuck so i find it actually to be really useful to kind of write things out as if i'm having a meeting with someone else and i find that um, that way it's it's been very helpful for me to kind of get my ideas to flow and by by actually putting them down on paper. So that's how I use my daily pages. Um, a lot of the times it's very chaotic. It's really, really messy, I, you know, but I do have a ring binder that I use for uh, work purposes. And that's where I will um, archive all the ideas so that I have a place with um, sections dedicated for different areas of my business um, so that I can flip to whichever section right away and then access that idea that I had for something. So um, that's how I use my Hobonichi Tyson. Um, so let's get started with my blank pages so I can kind of show you guys what my thought process is like. So like I mentioned before, I use my Hobonichi Weeks as a place to pre-plan and also um, write down my ideas for future collections. So let's just say this is November. So that's 11. 
Um, right now it's May and I'm working on the June collection, but I might have ideas for a November collection just randomly. So that's when I would want to write down those ideas so that I can uh, reference them later when it's time to work on the November collection because it's hard to kind of try to come up with a uh, idea for that collection during that month because then it, it takes a long time to come up with something like that. So uh, it's always to have a starting. It's always good to have a starting point. So I'm going to use last year's November collection as an example so that I can have something to reference uh, when I'm talking to you guys. So let's just say um, I have an idea for a November collection. And last year I released uh, my November collection and the theme was Indian textile floral. So I like to write down the theme here. So this is how I would write it. And that's the handwriting I would have for my whole finish weeks because I just don't care. Um, so the theme would be Indian textile floral pattern. Pattern. Um, and then um, there would, uh, so during November in the US at least, we have a holiday called Thanksgiving. So I write that down here because it's the fourth Thursday and then this would be Black Friday uh, which means as a shop I need to plan for maybe new releases or special items that I want to release for that Black Friday so I just want to kind of put that in there so um, if I forget for some reason I will reference this and remember that hey I'm supposed to do something here but I do like to kind of plan these kind of things ahead of time ideally um, so last year before Black Friday, I believe, um, I launched a collection just for that sale and it was the plaid collection. So say I'm going to release that collection right here. So plaid collection. And so when I when I say the theme for November is Indian textile floor pattern, that means this is the theme for the entire November, which means this collection would have launched around here. And I think I launched on the second because I like to launch on a Friday um, just so I can have the weekend off. <laughs> I usually work seven days a week, so it's just a nice kind of cutoff point. So um, let's just say that's going to be the launch day for November collection, collection launch day. but. It's backwards um, so I will circle it and that's pretty much it I think um, these are all tentative obviously this and that's tentative but that's the whole point of it and then down here I like to just kind of write down some product ideas that I want to release for that month so um, let's just say I want to maybe release washi tape which means I need to plan ahead because I don't make the washi someone else someone else makes the washi so I have to plan for that it's not like I can just print and cut in my home so washi tape and let's just say I want to do art prints down here so I'll just write that down so when it's time to plan for the November collection I'll look at this and say oh yeah remember I was supposed to do that and that um, and then something else I like to write down is the colorways that I have in mind for that collection um, sometimes I have an, a very clear idea of what which colorways I want to do, but sometimes I don't, that's okay too. But if I had an idea for the colorways, I definitely want to write that down because that's also another huge part of designing for my collection. So I all the design stuff I write on the left column and then all of the to-dos down here, I write um, all the product ideas I write down here. And that's just kind of how I've been doing it and I like it that way. So for last year, the Indian textile floral pattern, I did um indigo which is like a blue pattern um almost like porcelain and then portuguese tile or something like that and um and one black and white and i also want like a multicolor. i believe the november collection was the first time i offered different groups of colors so these had even more colors within the the groups so the pattern itself is black and white, but the backdrop is like pink or white or navy. So it was all different. So this is kind of uh, pretty much it. Um, 
And I mostly use my Hobonichi weeks just to plan for pre-plan for my business. But sometimes there will be some kind of personal things in there. For example, like I am studying for my um, Japanese exam. So that's in December. And that means in November, I would probably want to do something specific to review for that test. Um, then I would also kind of write that down here. Um, but I do want to kind of just like color code this so that I don't get them mixed up. So I like to use this color. I don't know why this marker like bleeds so much, but that's just how it is. Um, so I like to just kind of go in and kind of dot like things related to my business, just so I know that's what it is. And then um, say I'm studying for my Japanese exam and I will also, I mean, I know what this video is about my small business business but I think it's important because this is just like my daily life um so maybe I'll say Japanese I'll just write it down here Japanese this is JLPT so maybe I'll say okay review vocab let's just say vocab practice test and I'm probably going to be more specific and say review the Book. there's a book that I'm using that's called this um, so I'll just write that so I know exactly what it is and practice test I have a specific book that I want to use for that and I can't remember the <laughs> title of that book so I'll just write practice te practice test book for now but yeah that's kind of how it is and I'll just kind of dot that just so I know that's for something else but this is pretty much kind of how I use the monthly and then as time goes on I will probably have more ideas and now I'll just write more things here so now that's kind of how I use it. And then in the weekly section, I might have something even more specific, say during that week, I wanted to do this. Then maybe I'll have like more specific things I want to write down. And the way I use the Hobonichi Weeks weekly page is more like how I would use my cousin daily pages where it's just notes pages. Um, sometimes it correspond to the weeks up here, up in the monthly, page but sometimes it just has nothing to do with that um but i do try to stick to the month and so let's just say that's still november um and then i will have more notes about launch day and then just like remember to um to like listings i mean obviously i'm doing listings but i'm just saying like there might be things i don't want to forget to do um I can't my brain is blanking but there might be something that I thought of for that launch day and then maybe I'll just write down more ideas here and then later when I'm in my cousin I can reference this and have some more something to work from and I completely ignore all these dates most of the time and I just use this as just a ginormous notes page so that's how I use my hope in each weeks um, and I absolutely love that so once I'm done with my whole bunch of weeks, I will go into my cousin. Well, I don't necessarily go in that order. This is just kind of like randomly throughout the day. I might have some ideas and I'll just write in this. But when I'm planning in my Hobonichi cousin, um, at least for the monthly, I try to do it the week before the actual month. So if this is July, I might be planning this um, the, the second to last weekend of June. Um, so actually, so June 30th is Wednesday. So I might be planning for this, this, uh, month during that weekend, uh, that last weekend of June. And I'm doing this first thing I want to reference is the, um, Hobonichi weeks. So I don't have the July page, but let's just say I have a July page to kind of reference from. And let's just say there was nothing that was written on that page. So then we're starting from scratch. But the good thing is, the first thing I always like to do is to reference my routine page because I don't know about you, but when I look at a blank monthly page, I just have nothing, no thoughts at all. So I need to just start from somewhere. So I did create this routine page and even though it's the same thing that I do every month, it's always to, nice to just reference this and have something to copy from. And that way I don't have to um, think at least when I'm filling these out. And then once I fill those out magically, my brain starts to run, run again. Um, that's just how my brain works. I'm sure a lot of you are the same too. So the first thing I do is, um, I always do, uh, I have finance summary on the second Tuesday. 
I mean the first Tuesday so this would be when I do my finance summary and that's for work of course um and I have a grocery schedule so that's this day grocery we do grocery three times a week uh three three times a month and I know again like I said this is for planning for my small business but before I do any of that I need to do this because otherwise I don't know what I'm doing um I can't think before <laughs> uh before filling this out so i have grocery and then i do grocery here and then grocery here and then grocery here again so that's the three times we do our grocery and then it's about like every 10 days um and then we have like family days so um it's important because i can't do work that day technically um so that's that okay then what else do i have let's just for time's sake i'm just going to fill out this much um and then the next thing i do is i like to write out the i need to kind of put this back um so i'd like to kind of write out the weeks here so the first one is 26, I think. So I'll write 20 week 26 um, week 27. I'm just writing this really quickly. Week 28 week 29 week So now um, I like doing that because it just visually kind of breaks out the weeks for me. Um, and then I like to use the blank spaces down here to write out, uh, write out the goals that I have for my business. So I have two businesses. Um, one is Sterling Inc. and another one is launching soon, uh, which I'll share with you once it does. So let's just say here is where I write my Sterling Inc. goal. So maybe there's a new product that I'm launching. Let's just say washi tape again. <laughs> Even though I haven't released washi tape in so long, but I'm hoping to kind of catch up and then go back to my previous collections and release those washies. I just really haven't had the time to do that. Um, so let's just say I want to release washi tape that month. I want to do um, more videos. Let's just say I want to do four videos. That's crazy, but let's just say that for this um, video and then I'll say um, PR team application or something like that. Um, and then plan out three months of themes. Let's just say this is a mock-up, so it's not completely real. So then I like to kind of first mark out when I would want to launch my collection. And right now, as of now, what I'm trying to do is to launch my collection a week before the month ends. That way, if you purchase the new collection on launch day, you can receive the collection. You can receive the new collection items by, you know, at least at the beginning of the month. I won't say I won't promise that you will receive it right before the month starts because I'm one person and I'm packing all the orders so um, it might take me some time but normally I think it's been like it takes me a whole week to just finish packing all of the orders that's been the track record so hopefully that's true but um, that's that's my plans right now so that means I have to launch the new collection on the 23rd right here so I will write sterling ink launch day and then, oh, I underlined it using my um, ball pen, but normally what I, what I like to do is to kind of dot this and then also kind of do that just so I can see that's a deadline. So now that's the launch day and that means I have to kind of plan backwards now. So... I have the launch date and I have to take photos and those photos need to be edited and I have to create the listing. So ideally, I like to give myself a few days of leeway, um, a few days of um, time, a few days to kind of 
um, make it not too stressful. So if I'm launching on Friday, ideally I would want to take the photos on Tuesday of that week. But another thing that I need to keep in mind is that I need to check the weather because if it's a gloomy day or it's a rainy day, then it's very difficult to take good photos. So it's just kind of pending on the weather, but ideally it would happen on that Tuesday or Monday or Wednesday at the latest. Um, but I just tentatively write in photo shoot here. Um, and again, that is for Sterling Ink. So I'll use a the circle there. So photo shoot, and that's also sort of a deadline because that means I have to have all the products ready to go for the photo shoot. So now, which means I have to finish designing everything by this day. So products designed it, designed, printed. And I would cut at least the sample ones here. So cut products, products. So again, these are also like that. And then I have to, um, so that's the deadline for me to uh, finish uh, designing all the products. And that usually, designing the products usually takes me like at least a week. It just takes me a long time to come, kind of come up with a, all the products. So I will um, just, it, it might take me less, but I like to just be safe. Um, so that means I have to finish designing the graphics by this day. So this would be the deadline for um, finish graphics design, finish drawing, basically. So this is also another deadline. These are all small deadlines right here. And then it takes me about a week to kind of play with the drawings too. So that means I have to start the drawing right here. Right? And I have to, so it's not like I can just start drawing right away. I actually have to plan for the theme, like know exactly what I'm going to draw because I can't really plan and draw at the same time, then it's kind of like a waste of time. It's better for me to know exactly what I'm going to draw, which flowers, um, what kind of composition, like that has to be kind of worked out prior. So I like to, even though it's like not drawing, it's just researching, looking at images, looking at images of flowers, like picking out the flowers, that takes a long time. So that usually kind of at least takes like four days. So I'll be starting research, planning, Research, plan, theme. So that would start here. Composition, the deadline is there for the overall pattern. So these are all kind of key dates for Sterling Inc. So that needs to happen. This is a deadline. Um, so I now have the key dates here, right? And another important thing is that, like I said, I'm trying to launch the uh, collection a week before the month actually ends. So that means I also need to set a deadline for how long I want to spend on packing the launch order because that's the biggest amount of orders I will receive that month in one like weekend. And it will take me a long time to pack, but I need to set a deadline for myself so that for the next month, right? So for example, right now I'm saying that July 1st, I need to start research and plan the theme, which means I need to finish packing the, all the June launch, the, the launch orders right before this month started by June 30th. So that would have been a deadline for myself before, right? So in the same way, I need to set a deadline for myself here. And this is the last day to, like this would be the day when I catch up with all my orders. Whole orders. So ideally, I would finish packing everything at least by that Friday, and then so that everything can be sent out on Saturday. I always like to do that. Then I can kind of close that week um, very clean, and all the orders are caught up, and uh, USPS can the post office can start processing all of the latest um, 
packages and start ordering during that weekend. So that's kind of how I like to schedule my month. And as you can see, it's it the whole process takes exactly one month. And that's with endless hours of working on it. And I also have another business that I also need to do a lot of work on, on top of just like being, being a mom uh, to a little toddler that's very, very, it takes a lot of time. Um, so this is a full month and I have to kind of plan it out this way. And then um, throughout the week, throughout the month, I will kind of go in and write out smaller um, deadlines for myself. And there might be some other things related to administrative tasks that I need to complete. Um, and I'll write them down in here as well. For example, um, I think in July I have to pay taxes. So I'll write in the deadline for that. So let's just say it's July 15. So then I'll just write tax day. And for that, I like to just highlight so that I can see that's a really important day for business. So that's what happens. Um, and I also like to, once I have the key dates here, I like to just kind of write overall tasks over here. So, um, for example, like I do have the kind of a key deadline here, but it's always nice to kind of just write out kind of what the goal is for that week. Um, and that is the first thing I see. So it always helps me to kind of know, okay, this week I was supposed to complete, um, um, the drawings, I need to do this, I need to do that. And then that way I can always kind of have that, um, have those goals in mind when I'm approaching, when I'm working on that week. So once I have this, I go to my weekly and I will fill out, um, normally, like I showed you before, let me just go back to this. Um, normally if I, sh if we go back to my monthly, so it's more filled out. So for example, um, April, when did I launch on April? So April, I launched twice, actually. I launched on the 16th and I launched on the 30th. That was a special month um, that has never happened before. But um, besides the main key, um, see, I have potential launch date here that I underlined. But besides the key dates, I also have um, smaller tasks throughout and these would have been filled out and when i go into the weekly i like to just kind of copy those down so for example if this day i'm supposed to um let's just say this was the launch day mm, let's just pretend this is the launch day so i'll write launch day here and that would probably be highlighted because it's really important. And then I said this was supposed to be the photo shoot. So up here, it probably just means that that's a really important day. So there will be things that I need to keep in mind of. So for example, um, before the launch day, I need to go on uh, Instagram, Facebook, newsletter, Pinterest, and kind of put my marketing materials out. So like all the new photos, descriptions, um, just as a teaser. And then afterwards, I have to do like probably make a little reel with like music or something just to make it pretty. Um, and then what else? I have to create listings. And then sometimes I like to just write out all the list of the products here so that I can like kind of check it off. Um, and I also have, so I have a website, my own website on, through Shopify. And also I have a, an Etsy shop. So I have to double up on the listings. So it's nice to kind of like make sure that this is Shopify and this is Etsy and just kind of like check them off. And then there are things I need to do on launch day, but pretty much like this weekend is kind of, just chill out and kind of take a break from all the craziness and um, answer any emails. Um, Cause sometimes during launch day, people will like be ordering so quick, they might miss something and then they need to like, need me to put in a note or something. Then I need to just like keep track of my emails, but that's it, I'm, I'm not packing or anything. The most I would do is probably like stocking, stocking up on the new collections so that 
I it can be easier to pack the following week. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how it goes. Um, and another thing I just want to mention is that I do have a separate, um, not separate, but like a additional color coding system for the weeks. So for example, sometimes I'll just write out a bunch of to dos. Um, and here, for example, I wrote stocking and stocking, but even though it's one line item, it takes a long time. So if that's the case, I like to just highlight it as yellow. And that gives me an idea um, that makes me immediately know that that's a task that takes a long time. And it, this is really helpful when I have a very busy week and I don't want to kind of individually reread the tasks again and again. So for example, this is um, in April. So when you have so much stuff, you don't want to kind of individually read all the tasks. So I just kind of quickly highlight things I know so I know that hey, that's supposed to be an appointment. These are supposed to be things that take a long time. Um, that's a deadline, that's a deadline. So I need to keep track of that. Um, and right now this one is like, this is, um, it says Sterling birthday celebration. So that's both an appointment and also something that takes a whole entire day. So just because I have um, not that many tasks here doesn't mean that I should keep on adding to it um, because I have something that takes up the entire day and I keep, it's with someone else, it's with other people. So I cannot just um, multitask. So that's pretty much how my weeks looks like, um, weekly section looks like. And then um, the daily section, like it's not too, like I don't think it's that special. It's just me kind of having a conversation with myself. So for example, like I'll write, um, let's just say May collection, right? I'm planning for May collection. I'll just write out my collection and in the, my daily pages I like to use um, script script writing because it's faster it takes up a lot more room so I can go through the pages faster and that also makes me happy don't ask me why so I, that's just what I what I started doing and I really like it so May collection um, the main theme I want is wisteria so at this point I already know I want to do wisteria but I don't know what the specifics are um, I just have an idea saying, okay, May collection is going to be wisteria, but what does that mean? So now I'm having a meeting with myself. So first of all, the vellums. Vellums are like the main patterns. So I already know I want to have two different sets of vellums. So one is going to be wisteria. And the other one is going to be um, floral, like handmade paper. Handmade paper. Made paper. So now I have one and two. And then I kind of ask myself, is that going to be one collection? That's another collection. That was how I wanted it to be, but then it didn't really quite work out. So um, I had to scrap that idea, but I still kept the vellum here because I really liked it. Um, so now that's the vellum. And then in terms of products, what do I want? So I wanted to have a huge sticker like that with like large patterns here. And I knew I wanted some butterflies. And by the way, this is how I write. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not very neat. It's just like kind of me thinking about random things. So butterflies, it's kind of like ma mind mapping. So I know I wanted butterflies. So I'm thinking, okay, butterflies. What are the colors I would want in the butterflies? And this is kind of just how it went down. Um, I want blue, I want like sage. Um, I want um, brown, gray. And I also wanted those February ones from the February theme. February theme. And then I knew I wanted to kind of add gold foil. So this is just me like normally how I write in my daily section. And I this is very, very helpful. And after I finish writing, I'll probably just like clean it up and say, okay, what am I keeping here? Okay, scrap that idea maybe. And then so we don't need that. So then keep this, keep this, keep that, keep this, and keep this. But how am I doing the gold foil color? Um, color, shape, is it line work? So I'm just like asking myself questions. Um, and that's just like how it normally goes. And once I kind of spilled out all my ideas on paper, then I will clean it up and kind of summarize really quickly in my A6 binder that has like 
all the different ideas neatly tucked away with um, section tabs and everything so I can access them right away. Um, so like in my A6 planner, sorry, so let's just say I'm now in my A6 planner, which is a ring binder and that, that binder just has um, grid paper in it. I don't have any kind of specific inserts in there. So in the A6 planner, I might just summarize a like main collection with stereo and then um, do vellum color five um, and then there was blue, pink, sage, um, white and there was another color I can't remember oh navy of course so I'll just write that down and then I'll write um, products large pattern, pattern, large icon, icon, elements, like it'll be um, written out like that and then I'll just keep on going. I won't bore you with all the, all the rest of it, but these will be written down. And if I go back to the monthly section, so this, this section where I'm kind of doing research and planning out the theme, that's where I will be kind of writing down these ideas and that's how I plan for my theme normally. Um, so yeah, so that's how I use my planners, Albany planners. And I think even though I said this is how I use my Albany Tree planners for uh, planning my small business, planning for my small businesses, but I think this can apply to a lot of different things. If you have a normal like nine to five job uh, working for a company, you can plan out your work like like this too or you can um if you're a student studying for an exam you can plan out your study schedule this way too and um if you are just planning for personal like events or projects you can do this too i think there are just like so many different ways to um that you can use like this sort of system and i absolutely love the flexibility that hobonichi g planners offer you it just has everything that you would want in one planner and you can just kind of keep everything together which I just I love so much um and I can't wait to order the next year's Hobonichi's anyway I hope you guys found this video to be enjoyable and also helpful um and I'll see you in the next one thank you